What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another example dealing with transformations. So we're told if f of x equals the square root of x, then we gotta graph this here, negative two f of negative x over three minus two minus five. Now notice that this is another example where the parent function and then the transformations, they are separated. But we could have also asked this question where that parent function, the square root of x, and those transformations were combined. And if they were combined, then it looks like this. It would be negative two, the square root of negative x over three minus two. Basically, this portion in the bracket would be subbed in for that x, and then we'd have the minus five on the outside. Okay, so they were separated in this example, but the question could have also said, just graph this function here. And then in this case, we'd have to figure out what the parent function is, it'd be the square root of x, and then get uh, follow these steps, get the transformation values, do the mapping, et cetera, et cetera. Now, here it's in the general format, and so that parent function, it could have been anything. It was given as the square root of x, but it could have also been, uh, for example, the absolute value of x. This could have been the absolute value of x, and then we got to apply those transformations to that parent function. And if they were combined with this parent function, it would look like this, where this expression would go for this x here within the absolute value. So this general format, it could be applied to any parent function. Okay, so just want to mention that again. I mentioned that in the previous example. I want to keep mentioning it and make sure that you're comfortable in knowing that these questions can be asked in different kind of formats. So to graph this, we're gonna follow the exact same steps that we did in the previous couple of examples. So the first step is we need the parent function. Parent function in this case is the square root of x. The next step is we gotta get the transformation values, the a, k, d, and c values. And it's a little tougher with this one. Now remember the general transformation format is a f of k bracket x minus d plus c, like that. So notice that here, this is kind of in a weird format we haven't seen yet, negative x over three. We can actually take that and rewrite it as negative one over three x minus two, like that and then we can have a minus five, right? So I just took that x and kind of put it in front. And now we could see what that coefficient is more clearly in front of the x. Another way this could have been written is we could have maybe had negative two f of, let's say uh, negative x minus six over three minus five. So both of these would be combined into one fraction. And then what we would have to do, we'd have to do a little bit of more work here where we split up this single fraction into two separate fractions. And then, um, and then simplify to negative one over three X minus two minus five, which is what we have over here. Right, so don't be confused if it's given in these different kind of formats. Sometimes you're gonna to have to do a little bit of preliminary work to get it into a nice format that you can understand a little bit better. Because if you saw this, you might get confused, but just a simple little algebra and you get it into a format that's more understandable. Now we're not done here because notice in this general transformation format, the X has to be by itself. There can't be anything attached to the X. So what we actually have to do here is we need to factor out this negative one over three from both of these terms. And so we'd be left with an X. And then what would we be left with here? Well, when we factor something out, so let's take a more simple example. Let's say we have two X minus six. If we factor out a two, what determines what's left in the bracket? Well, we divide everything by two. So we'd be left with X minus three. So if, we're, if we have a negative one over three x minus two, and then we take out a negative one over three, what's left in the bracket? Well, we gotta divide this by negative one over three, and then we gotta divide this by negative one over three. So we'd be left with x, and then notice these negatives would turn into a positive, 
and then 2 divided by 1 over 3, it's like 2 over 1 divided by 1 over 3, which is like 2 over 1 times 3 over 1, right, times the reciprocal of that second fraction. And we would end up getting 6 over 1, which is just 6. So here we would have plus 6 remaining. Okay, so this here would be plus 6 in that bracket. Sometimes you got to do some work on the side here, especially if the fractions get more complex. So I, I should be able to put any fraction here, right? I, I could have put maybe like a negative 4 over 11, something crazy like that. And you should know that if we factor out that negative 4 over 11, what are we going to be left with here? Well, we would just take that negative 2 divided by negative 4 over 11. Negatives would make a positive, or we would do 2 over 1 divided by 4 over 11 here to get that remaining uh, D value, actually, in this case. That's what the transformation value is going to be. And then you can also check it by taking this negative 1 over 3 and distributing it back in. You should end up with this expression, which you would, because negative 1 over 3 times x, negative 1 over 3x, and then negative 1 over 3 times 6 is negative 2. I just wanted to spend a little bit of time on that because students can sometimes get confused with these fractions and it's a very good possibility that you may run into them. And now from here, we took this, made it into this, they're the exact same thing, and now notice we can get the A, K, D, and C value. So the A value is negative 2, the K value is negative 1 over 3, the D value is negative 6, remember we always change this sign, so x plus 6, we can rewrite that as x minus negative 6. And now it's in that x minus d format. And so that d value is negative 6, right? In this format, x minus d. It's always going to be the opposite sign of whatever that is there. And then the c value is minus 5. All right, so another thing is if you did not factor this negative 1 over 3, you might think that that d value would be positive 2. And that's a completely different function because a d value of positive 2 shifts the function to the right by 2, but a d value of negative 6 is going to shift the function 6 units to the left. So it completely is going to change the graph. So this step is uh, it's really important. Okay, so now what we do, we got our transformation values. So now we got to make a table for the transform function. And the two sub-steps are we take the parent table. So we take the table for this parent function square root of x, 0, 1, 4, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we got to transform into uh, this table for this function here. And more specifically, we got to apply this mapping formula. So all the x values, we're going to divide by negative 1 over 3. And then we're going to add the d value. So add negative 6, so it's like subtracting 6. And then um, the y values, we're multiplying by a, so we'll have negative 2y. And then plus c, so it's minus 5 over here. Okay, now this x over negative 1 over 3, we can actually make that look a little nicer. So it could be like x over 1 divided by negative 1 over 3, which is like x over 1 times negative 3 over 1, times the reciprocal of that, which you'd end up getting negative 3x. So x divided by negative 1 over 3, it's the exact same thing as negative 3x. Right, which I feel like it's easier to now see. And now all you do is you take all these x values in the parent table, put them through this formula, and then all the y values, put them through that formula. So if we plug in 0 for x, we'd end up with minus 6. Then we'd have minus 9, minus 18 if we plug in the 4. And then we'd have minus 33, like that. I might ignore this point when I'm graphing minus 33. It's really stretching out the scale, but maybe not. We'll see. Uh, we'll see once we get there. And then the y values, these we put through this formula. So negative 2 times 0 minus 5 gives us minus 5. Then we'd have negative 7, negative 9, and then uh, negative 11, like that. One thing I want to mention too 
is that, I mentioned this before, this square root of x, it looks like that. That's the parent function. And notice that it starts at 0 and 0. And so this point got transformed to this point, negative 6 and negative 5. So that's where this function is going to start. Right? So the type of point transforms as well. Now, you can also, uh, just to make sure, if you end up having time on the test, just to make sure that you got these transformations right, you can actually take a couple of points, plug it in for the x values, and make sure you get that corresponding y value. And you want to make sure you put it in a format where the uh, parent function and then the, um, the transformations are combined. So for example, if we take negative 33 here, plug it in for x, we'll have negative times negative, it's positive. So we'll have 33 divided by 3, which is 11. 11 minus 2 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Times negative 2 is negative 6. Minus 5 indeed gives us negative 11. You could plug in the rest of the x values here, and you should get the corresponding y value. So that's when you know that's when you could be pretty confident that the table you got is correct. So let's make a graph here, taking these points, plotting them here. Notice all the x values are negative, all the y values are negative. So I made the third quadrant kind of the biggest space here. The x values, I went up by negative fives because it's going all the way to negative 33. And then the y values, I went up by negative twos. So starting with negative six, negative five. So negative six, negative five, that's going to be like over here. And then we got negative 9, negative 7, which is like uh, down here. Negative 18, and then negative 9, that's like uh, over here. And then we got negative 33 and negative 11, which is going to be like over here. All right, so maybe not the most to scale, but this is the general shape of the graph that you should get. You could even take that uh, function where the parent and the transformations are combined, you could plug it into Desmos as well and check your graph. And so remember, we're starting at the negative 6 and negative 5. We're starting here, so the function is going like this. Right? This should be like a smoother curve maybe, but anyway, you get the idea. So it's going to look like that there. Right? And then that is the, uh, the final function. That is the graph for this parent function undergoing these transformations. Now, I mentioned this in previous videos. You can kind of check your answer too. What you can do is you can write out the transformation values, and then you can describe in words what happens, and you can kind of test it on that parent function that looks like this. Right, so it's not, this is not to scale for this graph, but just in general, the shape looks like that. And so notice an a value of negative 2, what does that mean? It means, first off, it's negative, so there's a reflection in the x-axis. And then there's also a vertical stretch by 2. Here, the k value is negative, so there's a reflection in the y-axis. And then negative one, and then uh, one over three. Remember, you flip that, so there's a horizontal stretch by uh, by a factor of three, the reciprocal of that. Negative six means we shift six left, and then negative five, a c value negative five means we go five down. Okay, so applying these to that reflection in the x-axis means it's going to be like this. We're going to stretch it, vertically stretch it, so it's going to go down more like that. Then there's a reflection in the y-axis, so now this is going to get reflected in the y-axis. There's going to be a horizontal stretch by 3. And so horizontally, if we scrunch it, it's kind of compressing it, but we're going to horizontally stretch it, so it's actually going to end up looking like that. And then 6 to the left and then five units down, and we should end up with that similar sort of shape. All right, so that's a nice quick way to maybe check it, check that parent function, go through these transformations, just kind of roughly on a graph, maybe a graph on the side, make sure that you get that corresponding same shape that you got with your, uh, with your table. 
And then notice here, we can also get the domain and the range if we're asked for it. So the domain, notice all the x values can be anything, but they have to be less than or equal to, what was it? It was negative 6, right? Yeah. All the x values have to be less than or equal to negative 6. They can't be greater than negative 6. And notice that if we do plug in an x value greater than negative 6, an easy one is like 0, notice we'll get negative 2 in that bracket. We can't square root a negative. Remember, this bracket's always going to be under this square root here. So the domain could be written like this, or it could be written from negative infinity to negative 6, inclusive of that negative 6. The range, we got y er, all the y values have to be less than or equal to negative 5. Right? This negative 5, all the y values are less than that. And this could be written as y is an element from negative infinity to negative 5. It's inclusive of the negative 5, so there's a square bracket there. All right, so this is the final graph right there. Those are the transformations. That's the domain and range.